This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. Station is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Tuesday, June 1st, wherever and however you're connected Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton alongside a man who is happy to have somebody back. Alex Barcella? That did not go how I was planning. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. It didn't go how I was planning it. No, it's it's uh, it's been a minute, but uh, yeah, eventful weekend for everybody. Uh, You found yourself in Alaska, which was cool. (laughs) I'm super jealous. Never been. I want to go. Sounds amazing. And uh, I had one of the best days of my life on Saturday. We had a baptism. Okay. Chelsea won, wins the uh, Champions League final. Sure. And, uh, you know, the Utah Warriors smashed the Austin Gilgroni. So I had a great day. Wow. It's going to be tough that's, to beat that Saturday. Rugby, for those who don't know. The only but, thing you needed was, like, a major BYU sporting event mixed in there. No, somewhere. it's the offseason. It's all good. Yeah. It's the offseason. Just, saying to, like, just saying to make it better. The combination of all those things yeah. is incredible. Oh, yeah. yeah. Talk about euphoria right there. Hanging out of the pool. Yeah, As great. a sports fan. Great. Wow. Forget Alaska. <laughs> I would have traded you. Well, not the part, I don't, but, I don't but like, know that you would. <laughs> what about what? Because we baptized my daughter in a my brother in law's pool. Like COVID era pandemic can still do that, right? Yeah. Which is super cool. Is eighty nine yeah. degrees by the way. Very, wow, very warm. Unlike some of the uh, baptismal fonts in Brazil. But anyway, uh, what if it was in Alaska? Sure, that that would be okay. The ultimate. Your Utah Jazz won a playoff game on Saturday as well. <laughs> yeah, How about that. What? Playoffs have been fun, although. The, I, so I'm just watching the fourth quarter of playoff games, by the way, just to get us, unless it's a blowout, except for the Jazz. I'm trying to watch the whole game. Okay. But there are too many blowouts. <laughs> not enough close games. Don't waste, don't waste your time. I'm not wasting my don't time. Don't waste your Ain't time. nobody got time for that. We will waste our time, however, and it's not really a waste, just exploring what it means for BYU basketball to have Alex Barcelo back. Yes, of course, Jerem is happy to have AB back, as am I. I'm more happy to have you back. Oh, thank you. I appreciate and Alex. that. The number one reason he opted for another year at BYU Basketball, he will join us live to answer that. Are the Cougars now a tournament team with Alex Barcelo coming back for another year? Head coach Mark Pope elaborates on that in the big weekend for BYU Hoops, plus more BYU football preseason projections from our guy, Bill Connolly, what it means for the Cougars. Here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Alex Barcelo is coming back, baby, like Michael Jordan to the Wizards. Mm -hmm. Uh, Barcelo announced it Friday at the Father and Sons Camp in the Smith Fieldhouse. He has an additional COVID year to use. He'll take it. Barcelo says belief in his team and coaches helped make the decision. I got so much belief in this team and the talent we have right now, the pieces that we have we're going to put together. And this coaching staff, the way they develop guys, I really believe that they're going to help me develop and, you know, help this, this whole team develop and having another special season. But, I mean, personally, when we were talking, I just thought that, you know, they're going to help me get, you know, develop me in order to take that next step and give it my, my biggest shot. And More on Barcelo's edition coming up in what's trending. How about some key television information and bowl game date information announced for BYU football, starting with, of course, the Vegas kickoff at the home of the Las Vegas Raiders against Arizona. Slated for a 1030 Eastern kickoff on ESPN, the mothership, September 4th. One week later, the rivalry game, BYU hosting Utah, 1015 Eastern kickoff on ESPN. Then a week after that, the Cougs host Arizona State September 18th. Guess what time? 10.15 Eastern on ESPN. Just get your sleep in those first three weeks. BYU will host Idaho State later in November, 3 Eastern on ESPN3 and BYU TV. The bowl season schedule, as I mentioned, is released starting December 17th. BYU won't have to wait long. They're slated for the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana on December 18th. Of course, the college football playoffs are on January 10th. We're throwing that are in there really just, just throwing because. That in there? Hey, just because. To me, the headline there is BYU TV, uh, Idaho City. No, we've known this for years, uh, the moment the game was coming. Uh, three straight games on ESPN. That's fantastic. Mm. John Rothstein reports BYU will play in the Battle for Atlantis tournament in 2022 in the Bahamas with, listen to this, Kansas, Tennessee, USC, NC State, Wisconsin, Butler, Dayton. Can you say quad one games? Uh, uh, yeah. Can you say we need to take the show to the Bahamas uh, around Thanksgiving? That sounds great to me. 
All right. Elijah Bryant and the Milwaukee Bucks playing for a playoff team. They sweep the Miami Heat. This isn't the bubble, people. Bryant scored four points in Thursday's Game 3 win. The Bucks, of course, took care of business on Saturday, 120-103, and broke out the brooms. Brandon Davies and Barcelona lost the EuroLeague Final 86-81 to Anadolu Efes of Turkey. Ah, they played good ball there in Istanbul. Davies had 17 points and 11 rebounds in the loss. BYU track and field qualifies 24 combined athletes, 14 men, 10 women to the NCAA Nationals. They broke two more school records in the process, including Michael Bluth. There's money in the banana stand. I've been saying this. Yes. Broke his own school record in the 400 meters, running a 45.13. He shaved off more than half a second. That's a lot in, uh, in the 400. Holy cow. Congratulations to Michael Bluth. Volleyball Mag released its All-American list. Gabby Garcia-Fernandez on the first team. Davide Gardini and Will Stanley on the second. Zach Eschenberg honorably mentioned. In Volleyball Nations League, essentially the World Championships, the men went 2-1 and one, uh, for Team USA over the weekend, beating Canada and Argentina, losing to the Brazil. Ben Patch played while uh, Taylor and Brendan Sander have yet to play. And finally, Felipe Jibrito Fejeda signs with Bole Talbachi in his home country of Brazil. Mm. Michaela Coulihan. Ranks number two in top drawer soccer's top NCAA player rankings. Nah, number no, two. Nah, she's number one here. Yeah, that's she's true. One Absolutely. You got it wrong, top drawer. <laughs> she's ranked number 10 in the NCAA Division I for total goals with 11. And she's coming back. All right, we're going to call a quick timeout, a little 20 here, and come back with a loaded edition of What's Trending and – Alex Barcelo joins us live. This is BYU Sports Nation. Stay with us. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Sports Nation, first day of June 2021. Great to have you with us alongside Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. Loaded show for you today, including Alex Barcelo, who will join us live in about 10 minutes why he opted to come back for yet another season and what the recruiting pitch was like from his head coach, Mark Pope. Are the Cougars a tournament team right now, Jerem, with A.B. back in the lineup? Good question. And more BYU football preseason projections from ESPN's Bill Connolly. Let's get to what's trending right now. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Listen up, everyone. And I know that's uh, an issue this morning. (laughs) It's BYU (laughs) basketball, an NCAA tournament team right now because Alex Barcelo is coming back. Good question. So let's break it down. We think that Tijon Lucas will equal the production of Brandon Averett. Uh, you know, similar type player, great distributor, uh, can can score 30 in a game. He's done that a couple times. Okay, that's that seems one for one there. My real question is, can Gavin Baxter be as good as Matt Harms? Mm. That's the question. So Matt Harms, seven foot three, shot blocker, excellent in pick and roll. Even had a three at the end of a game to just you know, like Gavin did too against LMU a couple years ago. But it's like okay. And Gav does have a 7-3 wingspan. I confirmed that again this morning. I was like, "How? what's the wingspan? 7-3. So in some way, he's a similar size defensively. Sure, rim protector. What's, yes, what's missing is the offense for Gav. He's developing that. He's coming off an knee injury. Gavin Bax is going to be awesome. It just may take a sec to come back from injury and get into the groove. I'm not sure he's the offensive threat that Matt Harms is. I think Gavin's a better rebounder than Matt was. I think they're probably pretty similar in terms of rim protection. Matt, a little... Uh, longer in terms of being seven three, six inches taller. So that's the question. The other variable that may help this year's team instead of last year's team is will Caleb Lohner be way better? Will Trevenel be way better? Because those guys were kind of young and developing and at times th- showed flashes. Trevenel in the WCC championship game. Caleb Lohner multiple times. He's having double doubles and just yeah. dominating. Yeah. That could push them over the edge. Right now I go, oh, probably – um, but I do think that if BYU adds one more transfer piece of someone who can come in and be in the eight-man rotation, now that makes this team perhaps even better than last year. Because Ooh. remember, last year was a six seed. Yeah. How many times has BYU done? Just a handful in BYU history. Three times? Right? Like 81, uh, you know, 2011, 
And then there were a couple times BYU's been in eight or a nine. Sure. Right? But, uh, you know, in, in the 80s and 90s, there were probably a couple more. But not very often. Yeah, six or better. I think it's like three, maybe four times ever. That Last year's team was really good. It was disappointing in losing to UCLA, who goes to the Final Four. But um, it's an interesting conversation. I think probably an NCAA tournament team. Yeah, if you include what BYU was projected to do before COVID shut everything down, then it would be back-to-back years as a yeah. six seed. But oh, yeah, then sure. 81 and 2011 are the only other two teams that come to mind that were projected solid seeds going into the bracket. It just doesn't happen often. How about that? Mark Pope, his first two years, and now he convinces Alex Barcelo to come back. And I can't back down from what I've already been saying. I said before we knew if A.B. was going to come back that if he does, all of a sudden BYU is a tournament team. So guess what? I think they're a tournament team now that he's back. Yeah. Maybe a 9 or a 10 seed right now because of the questions you brought up about the front court. Like, And I don't really care. I just want to get in. I'm not that picky about sure. like what the seed is, just that BYU's in the tourney. I think yeah. BYU is an NCAA tournament team right now. Probably not a 6 seed. <laughs> 6 is so but, good. Can Gavin Baxter and Richard Harward and Caleb Lohner all make up combined for the production, rim protection, and presence that Matt Harms brought for BYU basketball last year? Well, Richard and Caleb need to account for what they did last year, too. Right. Right. So With the insert, that's why yeah. I pick on, not pick on, but bring in Gavin because he wasn't really there right. most of the season. Well, Those I, guys were there. I guess what I'm saying is can Richard Harward and Caleb Lohner – be better can can not only they account for what they did but to take a step forward thus eliminating some of the need for matt harms along with the insertion of gavin baxter so those three guys are kind of the question mark for me if byu can really be as good as they were last year in the front court and maybe there's another transfer coming down perhaps the line. let's quantify this an opinion with research here let's go um ken palm okay we talked about how last year's defense was so good with matt harms right so 2000, 2003, 2008, those are tied for the best defensive efficiency teams. The point is to defensively not allow as many points, right? So 91.7, those okay. were okay. Uh, the best defenses in the last 25 years, according to Ken Palm. Last year was the fourth best in 25 years, 92.5. Can BYU be as good as that this year? Ooh. That's really stinking good. Matt like, Harms was the West Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year. That's why I. That's why I questioned this idea of okay, well, who's going to replace that defensive production? Not to mention how good Matt was in the pick and roll. I, I just think Gav's not that same kind of player, which is okay. Bureau's not trying to make Gavin Baxter Matt Harms. I'm just saying the loss of Matt Harms perhaps is more than we think. Will BYU feel that loss more defensively than they would potentially gain? offensively from the other guys we just talked about taking a step yeah. forward. And can Gav, like, again, Gav is a better rebounder mm-hmm. than Matt Harms. That Gavin, helps defensively. Gavin, Gavin Baxter runs the floor really well as well. Like, he's going to be an alley-oop guy at times. But he's coming off a knee injury, too. Hopefully he's okay. Um, you know, it's it's safe to assume that it might take a minute uh, for him to be as bouncy. Uh, but, I yeah, I'm excited about this team. Because, yes, we're going to see BYU – um, sniffing the bracket quite a bit, right? They're gonna be they're gonna be bubblicious quite a bit, if not in like barely out, you know, most of the season. Um, and and I'm excited about it. One thing in the league to keep in mind too is St. Mary's not gonna be as bad as they were last year. There's no way. Like St. Mary's wasn't great. They weren't even close to an NCAA tournament team, which they generally at least sniff it. Sure. So that's going to be more of a challenge in league two. They dealt with some injury concerns. They've got recruits coming down the pipeline. Trust me, I've talked to I bet guy, there's some Alex Australians Jensen. He's like, coming. it's not going to be anything like last year was. They were happy to get into the NIT for crying out loud. Yeah, when has that happened? I didn't even know recently? the NIT happened this year. Honestly, <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea. It did? Who won? I have no clue. BYU probably a 9 or a 10 seed right now with Alex Barcelo, which is fantastic. We're talking about the I'm Cougars cool being in position to I'm go to cool the NCAA tournament three consecutive years under Mark Pope. and have Amazing. Two six seeds, and then we'll see what happens this year. But I'm thrilled, thrilled that Alex Marcel is coming. BYU has their alpha back, a guy that's going to go for 18 to 20 a night and dish the ball out for five or six assists, and he shoots like 48% from the three-point line. Yeah, he's. it's great to have him back. It really is. And, oh, by the way, the last two years, AB has been on both those teams. Not a coincidence. Yes.
All right. We will now move from our conversation to Voice of the Nation because we want to hear what all of you think about Alex Barcelo's return to BYU basketball. Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Josh Landon answers on Twitter. I think it changes a lot for BYU basketball. I was still hyped for the upcoming additions, but now BYU has their court general returning along with a lot of expected points per game. Barcelo will be a veteran leader, too, to hopefully help the returners and additions gel together. Tijon Lucas is a sixth-year senior because he had a transfer year, redshirt, and now this extra year, right? That's why it's such a trade-off for uh, Brandon Averett. And then Alex is a fifth-year guy. So lots of, like, 11 years, you know, nine years going into the season of experience in the backcourt. We'll have to come up with a nickname for those guys, too. Sure. And Gideon George. Tlob. What does Gideon George do? He's kind of the, the mystery man in this entire mix. What kind of step can he take moving forward? I like that. A foot or shoe pun. <laughs> Unintentional. About, about, about Unintentional. Yeah, great. All right. You've heard from Josh Landon. Send in your responses. Hashtag BYUSN. And uh, we promised it's time for us to deliver. We are convinced that part of the reason Alex Barcelo decided to return to BYU was solely so that he could be on BYU Sports Nation to discuss BYU basketball a little bit more. He joins us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. AB, welcome back to the show. What's up, guys? It's good to be back. Hey, you're not kidding. It's good to have you back. So let's start here. What was the number one reason you opted for one more year with BYU basketball? You guys. I wanted to be on Sports Nation. <laughs> we were right. <laughs> I knew it. You guys always are. <laughs> no, just, uh, you know, the, there was a bunch of reasons that, that played a, a factor in my decision. And, uh, you know, one being, my, my beautiful fiance, um, just the fact that she loves Provo so much and she just, you know, thought that me spending another year here in, in Provo playing under this coach and staff could just help me develop my game to, to that next level and hopefully hear my name in the upcoming NBA draft. Um, another reason was just the Marriott Center. I mean, the, the fans that we have here, the, the school, the, the university, what we stand for, being able to represent the Y one more year, uh, just... You know, it it puts a lot of happiness in my heart. And uh, the third reason, I mean, just there was a lot of things left on the table. You know, I I, I want a conference championship and I want to make a run in this NCAA tournament. And I believe that, you know, we were right there. And, uh, you know, we we can make that push forward to to do some spectacular things this season. Well, first off, thanks for coming back. We're stoked, man. It's going to be a fun year again. (laughs) The last two years have been really, really fun. Uh, you know, two six seeds uh, would have been two years ago, according to Lenardi last year, obviously a six seed. That's some of the best ball BYU's played in a long time. Now we have a group that, yes, Brandon Averett and Matt Harms are gone, and they had amazing contributions, but Gavin Baxter's back. Tijon Lucas comes in. Perhaps there's another transfer coming in. The development of the current guys. We were just talking about how we feel like, Spencer's like, yes, BYU's a tournament team right now, and I'm like, listen, probably, if, if not in, barely out. Like, it's going to be fun. What, you talked about that unfinished business. What is it that you feel like this group can accomplish now that you'll be in your third year and you've kind of grown old together with some of these guys? Uh, I mean, I, th- I think the sky's the limit for us. You know, I was saying throughout the season last year that, you know, I wanted that conference championship. I wanted to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament, the big dance, what every kid dreams of um, when he's little. And then, you know, going to college, being able to experience that, but I think this team's really talented. You know, we have a lot of different pieces. It's going to be a completely different team from last year as it was, you know, the previous year. Just every single team, it's, it's different each season. But uh, this coaching staff, you know, I just I attribute it all to the coaching staff because they're, they're the ones that are getting all these high-talented guys. You know, they're the ones that are developing us. And then, you know, we're, we're just listening to what they're, what they're teaching us. And we're trying to do the best that we can every day. We're trying to get better every day, which is what they preach up and down. You know, it sounds a little bit cliche sometimes, but that's what we do. You know, we walk into the gym every single day trying to get just a little bit better. BYU basketball senior point guard Alex Barcella with us on BYU Sports Nation. You've had quite the last week or so, <laughs> along with announcing your decision to come back to BYU in front of a bunch of BYU basketball campers, which was awesome. 
You also get engaged, Alex. So at what point do you take an emotional break and just kind of let things soak in? <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking this week, but I'm, I'm heading right into workouts and, you know, trying to trying to stay tuned, trying to get ready for this upcoming season. And I mean, just being able to be on Sports Nation with you guys, it's a blessing. And, you know, it's always fun being on here. And uh, I'm just I'm trying to soak it all in while everything's going on right now, just day by day. And, you know, it's it's the happiest time of my life right now. And I'm going to keep saying that because it is. I, I truly believe that, And you know, getting getting engaged to Zoe and, you know, net, I, the fact that she said yes, you know, surprised all the coaching staff. And it surprised <laughs> me. I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful, you know, she's way out of my league, but that and then on. <laughs> <laughs> she said was, yes was, unbelievable yes <laughs> you're like i'm you're like i'm trying to get drafted and i feel like you're a first rounder so yeah there oh you go. my gosh and, and she was the hardest person to surprise throughout the whole process of doing it it was just you know it was it was a, a beautiful night and uh you know being able to come back for another year both both of those things trying to trying to just absorb all of it and being in, I, I just have so much love for this university and the fact that I get to represent the Y another year and have fans in the Marriott Center. It just, you know, it, it just makes me so happy. Mm. Okay, so when you evaluated this process and, and you, you listed the reasons why you wanted to come back, uh, what were you hearing from NBA scouts that told you, okay, this is probably a good decision to develop and get, get myself higher up that list that you can work yeah. on this year? Yeah, so so first and foremost, there's not a traditional draft process this year, which I thought, you know, that that's going to kind of take away some of my opportunity that I may have, you know, considering that the the NBA team saying, you know what, you're probably not going to hear your name in this year's draft. You might be able to get on a two way or, you know, get on a G League team and you're guaranteed overseas. But, you know, if you, if you really want to make this dream happen, you know, here here's the the hard facts and and I'm a big person on honesty I just want to hear the truth no matter how hard that is and ever since a little kid you know I've dreamed about putting on an NBA jersey and playing in those arenas and uh you know I, I think that playing for this coaching staff another year they could just develop me just seeing what they've done over these past two years with my development I think they can make a, a huge jump and uh I'm gonna have to work harder than ever uh to make that happen but with this coaching staff I believe anything's possible and you know they're they're working as hard as they can to help me make my dreams come true. And, and I'm so thankful for them. Does Elijah Bryant give you any added uh, inspiration or hope given undrafted guy? I know you want to be drafted, but if undrafted that you can still play internationally and still get to the NBA. Definitely, definitely for sure. You know, everyone has their own path, their own journey, but uh, you know, that that's the dream. So whether or not, whether or not I hear my name in the draft or you know, I have to go overseas or stay in the G League or be on a two-way, whatever comes out of this next year at, at the end of it. You know, I, I just wanted to, to give myself another year. I didn't want to leave anything on the table. I wanted to, to put my whole heart and soul into this and, and see if I can make this dream come true. But, you know, I, I, I can live with that. I, I don't know if I would have left this year. I, I don't know if I could have lived with that, you know, thinking about the what if or what could have been. Um, but I, I think it's going to be hard no matter what, you know, there's, there's only so many guys in that league and th that's for a reason. They're the most talented guys in the world. And, uh, I, I want to eventually be one of those guys, but I know it's going to be a hard journey. Alex Barcella with us on BYU sports nation. Let's talk specifics. You mentioned I've got to work harder than I ever have before to realize that dream. If we're talking skill set and where you want to get better in the nuances, where does that list start, Alex? Yeah, well, you know, at my position, I'm I'm six two, and you know, I'm not the not the lengthiest guy, but I, I got to be the the toughest guy on the court. I have to be a leader, toughest guy. I got to be able to shoot the ball. I got to be able to make the right decision, the right play, uh, not turn over the ball. And uh, you know, th those are all the things that I, I think could translate. You know, I'm not going to come in and be any a franchise guy, but I, you, know, you got to know your role going into that league. And you know, if I can be a guy that that runs a second second unit or uh, you know third unit wh whatever that may be whatever they need me to do if I'm in that league I'm, I'm gonna go do it but uh, just you know hearing that feedback from them you know 
knowing going into this year that these are the things that I got to get better at being able to guard the, de the defensive side of the ball, you know, say I get mashed up with LeBron or mashed up with Damian Lillard, like whatever it may be, I'm going to have to, you know, do my best to guard them and not let them score. Cause in that league, everybody can score, you know, it's, it's hard. Every single person will get scored on two, three times in a row, but how can you prevent that? And uh, that's, that's another thing that I'm going to have to work on a lot this season, just how quick my hands are seeing if I can, you know, strip balls from guys when they're driving, um, you know, taking more charges, whatever I can do on the defensive side of the ball and, and guarding different positions, just showing that. I think, I think that's going to be huge. I don't know how you feel about comparisons to a Gonzaga guy, but uh, John Stockton got thrown around a little bit when people were trying to compare you to an NBA prototype. How do you feel about that? I mean, whenever you get compared to, to guys at that level, that guys that have that much talent, you know, it's, it's, it's really nice to hear. Uh, I'd like to think I'm a little bit more athletic, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to say. but you know, it's, it's a huge compliment, but me, I, I like to be my own person. I like to be my own basketball player. I think I, I bring something different to the table, but it's definitely a huge compliment to me. Yeah. And they, listen, I, I was just thinking, just thinking out loud quickly. I was like, there are guys like Howell Neto uh, in the league who are six, one white 80, kind of similar size to you. Like they exist they're in the NBA. They're on, like you said, second and third units on teams that are in the play. Like, it exists. So uh, it's going to be fun to see your development in that way. Do want to ask you about uh, your new running mate in the backcourt. We assume he's going to be a starter as a senior coming in as a transfer, Tijon Lucas. Were you involved in the recruitment process, and uh, have you talked to him yet? So I actually, I actually wasn't just because Coach told me to kind of kind of get out and go, go take some time just because – Right after season, I just got right back into training, Matt and I, because we didn't know whether or not we were going to come back. So I was just focused on, hey, I, you know, can I get better? How much more can I train? What can I do? And uh, so then I went back to Arizona, saw saw my fiance graduate and then propose. And I've just been busy with all that. So I actually haven't talked to him. I talked to Matt a little bit after I got engaged. And he said he had a long conversation with him, said, I love the guy. And I'm so excited to talk to him um, once all of this settles down. And I've watched a lot of film on him on Synergy once he committed. And, and man, I'm so excited to play with him. So, Matt, you're saying Matt is in Matt Harms, who has moved on but is still helping recruit guys to BYU? That's the type of guy Matt is. He's, <laughs> nice. he's phenomenal. Oh, my gosh. I wish he would have come back, but he's doing what's best for him. And I'm so excited to see what, what his future holds. Alex Barcelo on BYU Sports Nation. How much did the factor of your sister coming to BYU play into your decision to come back for one more year? She was definitely in my ear a lot. I would say, <laughs> you know, a, a little bit, just so I could be that older brother, kind of, you know, beating her in shooting competitions late, late at night at the gym or whatever, whatever she wants to do, teaching her new moves. But once I told her that, you know, I'd come to the decision, she was, she was really excited and, I'm so excited to get her here on campus. Yeah, what type of player is Amanda Barcelo? She's real tough. You know, she's, I wish I got some of her height. She's almost as tall as me, which oh. is kind of scary. But, um, you know, she can play pretty, in high school, she's played pretty much every position. I think she'll play one through three um, in college. But she can shoot the ball really well. She's great, uh, great passer, can play defense. Just, you know, real tough, you know. I think that that maybe runs through our, our family, just a bunch, of, a bunch of tough ball players. Absolutely. I was going to say, she's got to be tough, right? She's a Barcelo. Okay, in the opening <laughs> segment, we were talking about the difference between uh, the team that just finished playing a couple months ago and this next year's team. We were talking about the defensive impact of Matt Harms. On Ken Palm, this was the fourth best defense in the last 25 years for BYU. Certainly, that's going to be tough to replace. Yet, Gavin Baxter is a tremendous defensive player, Hopefully he's super healthy coming off the knee injury. Offensively, he's a little different, right? More of an offensive rebounder, cleanup guy. Um, you know, Matt Harms was a pick and roll guy. What what benefit do you feel like Gavin Baxter will bring to the table that is different than what Matt Harms was? I mean, you know, both are really great players. I think Gavin, you know, the how athletic he is, being able to run in transition, being a rim runner, um, you know, in half court coming off the pick and roll, being able to catch and, you know, put it in the hoop right away with a dunk or lay up above the rim, or, 
coming down and catching and being able to pass. But both of them are great passers, great, you know, great shot blockers, uh, just phenomenal players. But I'm really excited for Gavin. He's looking really good right now. Um, he's just continuing to get healthier and healthier every day. And uh, I'm so excited for him to be on the court with us. Alex, congratulations again on the best week ever, your engagement, your decision to come back to BYU, surviving the onslaught of pitches from Mark Pope. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure that was overwhelming. But you did it, man, and we're thrilled to have you back. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be back. A.B., we'll talk to you again soon. Alex Barcelo on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Yeah, interesting to see his thought process, right? And uh, talk a little bit about Gav. So, yeah, exciting. Third year with Alex Barcelo. I don't think we, we didn't think we'd get three years. By the way, he's going to have, we hope, what's called a regular normal season. He hasn't had one. Yeah. So the end of the first year, COVID hits, no March Madness. Last year, like no fans, limited fans. This year, it's full bore. Everything's normal. Now he's the alpha. Season. He's the alpha was last for a year. normal season. It was a normal year. season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? He gets like the full experience now. I'm excited awesome. for him. Yeah. Okay, coming up, Mark Pope reacts to the return of Alex Porcello. And Zach Wilson, remember him? His first yeah. official team activity results with the New York Jets are in. How did he look statistically? Okay. This is BYU Sports Nation. Okay. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. Check out BYUSN right now's latest videos. They include Kiki jumping on desks. A friend style video and BYU coaches uh, and Tom Home won that. And the usual social media flair from Kiki and Cubs. It's on the BYSN Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and newly formed BYSN YouTube account. He is Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton, and this is BYU Sports Nation on June 1st. We're into June, baby. Yeah, we are. It is time to whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problem. In William Connolly's SP Plus independent preview of Brigham Young University, he has the Cougars projected to go 7-5 and five with likely losses Ooh. to Utah, Arizona State, and USC, as in 29% chance or less. What say ye? I would agree with the likely part if BYU didn't play two of those three games at all home. BYU's, because this is what they do. It's what they do. They're going to win one of those home games, whether it's Utah or Arizona State. Let's hope it's both. Yes. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They will win at least one of those big home games against Utah or Arizona State. So Arizona State's overrated. You're telling yes, me the same yes. chance to lose or win against I know Arizona they have State a great quarterback. They have awesome talent. Is he awesome great? Skilled he players. had a good freshman year. They have a lot of speed and skill players. Yeah, Jaden Daniels. But it's BYU at home. Guess who had more talent than that and more speed when they came to Pro Bowl a couple of years ago? Northern USC. Illinois. USC. Oh, yeah. Come uh, on. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, those numbers are fine, except Arizona State. I don't agree with that Yeah. One. What, likely lost? More like a, no, like 40%. Two of those three at home? Come on. Arizona State, in the end, w- w- at the end of the season, we'll be like, no, that was more of a pick than, so. What did Bill Connolly say about Arizona? More importantly. That, that's a win for BYU? More importantly. When does that game happen again? Countdown to the Wildcats. 95 days. Sub Hundy. Okay. 95 days away, okay. a Kairos Tonga away <laughs> from BYU taking on Arizona at the, the home of the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, we still got a way to go. <laughs> that was an overpass kill. OPK, OPK. Though he did have, uh, what, that touchdown pass get tweeted out by the Chicago from Bears from his high, high school. school days. Well, yeah, where did he go again? East? Yes. East? Granger? <laughs> no, Granger. Oh, Granger. Yeah, 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 Granger, that's Granger. right. Who's Sorry. our East guy? Some, who's, our, who's our big lineman from East? Ah, we got to come back to that. But 95 days, 95 days away. Indeed. Speaking of countdowns, Jeremy is now officially 100 days until the beginning of the National Football League season and Zach Wilson against Sam Darnold and the Carolina Panthers. But first things first. Only we are excited for that matchup. In his OTAs, Zach Wilson went two for three and 11 on 11 drills, okay. 10 for 13 passing and seven on sevens. Are you impressed? He will be NFL first team all pro. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Whatever. 
No, I'm not. No. <laughs> I'm impressed and, with what Zach Wilson no. did in game situations on the field. Let's yeah. see him play in the NFL. I don't need stats from if he's stuck there. Sevens. That would be bad, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The date for the Independence Bowl, get excited, is set for December 18th. Do you like the bowl game being an earlier one? Always. I'm always in favor of a pre-Christmas game unless it's a major bowl game. Yes. So I am totally in favor. I am too, selfishly for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Because we'll probably have men's basketball games anyways. And you got kids, right? It's different when you have kids. Oh, yeah, I do have kids. For I sure. Forgot. Big game boomer. Remember him? Uh, yeah. He's Ranked dominant. Lavelle Edwards Stadium as the fourth loudest group of five stadium entering the 2021 season. What do you think of that ranking? I think BYU's not a group of five team. That's Correct. I don't. Who were the top three? Uh, I don't even care to know because uh, App, App State, <laughs> Boise State, and uh, Oregon State. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I just said Oregon State. That's a, that's a joke. <laughs> Kansas. And Kansas and uh, Vanderbilt. I pay no attention to this ranking. Yes, because BYU is not a group of five team. Yeah. 24 Cougars qualified for nationals in track and field. Pretty awesome. How many will return with national championships? Hmm. One of the relay teams, I think, is going to win a national championship. So I think four right there and then maybe like one more. So five. Okay. I will tell you who's ranked in the top five against the competition going in. Okay. Ready? Steeplechase, Courtney Wayman, second. High jump, Sierra Tidwell. In relation to Paul, third. Mm -hmm. Steeplechase, Garrett Marsing, third. 400 meters. Michael Bluth. There's money in the banana stand. Michael Bluth. Fourth. And in the 1500, Whitney Orton, fourth. I think one of those five come home with an Addy. Okay. Does the relay team count, though? None of them are ranked in the top five against the competition. Certainly, they could do it. They could, they do, could it. do it. I'm just saying that's going to be hard. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, one would be amazing. One Anybody, would be amazing. And one would be amazing. They've already, BYU's already got a track and field, well, in a way, cross-country national championship on the women's side and an individual with Connor Mance on the men's side. We'll take it. Make more. Fine. Yeah, we'll win more. Okay. The USA. I can't believe this, Jerem. Failed to qualify a team for the Tokyo Olympics in three-on-three basketball. Huh? Which three BYU Cougars would you put together in an effort to qualify a team for the Olympics? Okay, here's my team. It's more of a like, modern-ish team. Mike Rose. Mm-hmm. No D, but shooting the three. Yes. That's my game, too. Michael Smith. Okay. I think he's just so versatile. Yeah. Even now. And Lee Kamard. Lee Kamard can do it all in this wow. situation. Wow. Yeah. I like that team. Yeah. I'm going to go with the classics. You know, let's go with two of the national players of the year that can score in a Just heavy two of place. them? Or... Okay. Just kidding. Danny Ainge, <laughs> Jimmer Fredette. Danny and right let's... now? <sighs> Probably bad knees, although he can cross up his dog pretty well. Maybe. We've seen those videos. See, I think he can still shoot, man. I th- oh, you never lose a shot. I think he can you still shoot. Yeah. Uh, and then Brandon Davies. Oh, throw in. Br- Wait, Brandon Davis or Davies? Davies. Oh, okay. Just... Not Davis. Yeah. That guy's Davis a has-been. Is- Tyler Magnum, maybe a quarterback? Like, who knows? <laughs> Coming up, the top five Alex Barcelo plays of his career so far. And what is Mark Pope's level of excitement about Alex Barcelo coming back for one more year? This, Alex Barcelo. You judge for yourselves next. You make the call. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Sports Nation has its own YouTube channel. That's where we're putting uh, interviews from the show. BYU is in right now. Subscribe today and get the best BYU Sports content. Ever. Do it! Welcome back Thank to you. BYU Sports Nation. Thank you, Shia. Live from Studio B. A guy who rivals Shia LaBeouf's energy is BYU basketball head coach Mark Pope. It's right there. It's I'm telling you, it's right there. It's true. In fact, we spoke with him courtesy of Jason Shepard one-on-one right after the decision was made and announced that Alex Barcelo was coming back. How excited was he? You be the judge. Coach, you've had quite the week. Hanging out on glaciers in Alaska. You got the father-son's camp. And now you get Alex Barcelo back. This has been a good week for you. It's it's a great week. Uh, It it is a great week. And obviously the most important piece is Alex Barcelo. He, um, you know, you think... Over the last two years, he's been the number one three-point shooter in the entire country at 48.1%. He's one of four guys that are returning All-Americans right now that are actually coming back. Uh, And what he's done for our team over the last two years is historic, only the second time in the last 40 years. And um, that's not even talking about the best stuff he does, which is his leadership in the locker room and his toughness on the court. And I'm going to sleep so much better all summer long knowing that 
I don't have to start trying to win games at BYU without Alex Barcelo. How concerned were you that he wasn't going to come back? He had two of these guys. Matt Harms decided he was going to move on. Alex, you're kind of waiting on him. Was there concern that maybe he wasn't going to come back? Yeah, and, and I don't know if concern is the right word because what we want for these guys is do what's best for them to find out where their whole heart is. And, and all three of our seniors actually went back and forth trying to figure out where, you know, this, this process is so hard. And um, so I was just hoping at the end of the day that Alex would – would find out where his heart really was. And I'm not going to lie, I'm super, super excited that it's back here for another year because it's just a gift to everybody here at BYU basketball, the community, the university, everywhere. What was the recruiting process to bring him back? Because I've got to imagine you don't have to sell him on the program. He already knows that. So how do you approach that? Well, uh, the great thing is, you know, you don't get to recruit guys that you know as intimately as we did this year knowing these guys. And um, we witnessed a lot of the recruiting live because I was trying to, it's the only time you're not allowed to recruit right. in front of anybody except for this <laughs> weird scenario. So I was trying to make the recruiting as public as possible. And um, it was just awesome. It was mostly just trying to talk and talk and talk and let him find out and let Matt find out and Brandon find out uh, where their heart was. And, and um, th- you know, that's the most important thing is that these guys are where they most want to be. And right now he, he sees the benefit he is so incredibly determined to settle for nothing less than taking his biggest possible swing at playing at the highest level. And um, in his heart, he believes that coming back here will help him do that. And I think, I think he's smart. I think it's right. Well, and he told me, he said one of the biggest reasons it was what you mentioned. He wants to play in the NBA, and he thinks coming back gives him that opportunity. But he also said, I've got some unfinished business. Yeah. As a coach, I've got to imagine you love hearing that. Yeah, and, and listen. He loves these guys, and he loves this university, and he loves this community. And he's, um, you know, when you come and you work as hard as these guys do and you sacrifice as much as they do, and then over time you get to see yourself, it's, it's, it's because of these guys' individual and team effort that they see themselves change as human beings. And Alex is certainly, he's observed that in himself, and he knows that there's more growth for him. His ceiling is really high, and as good as he's been, he can get better. And um, I'm excited we all get to do that together. Well, you talked about his production last year, and yeah, you've had some guys that have moved on, but you get a lot of production back, and having Alex back has got to be huge for that. It's huge, and, and um, you know, I, I expect a bunch of our guys to take massive jumps. Like the, the jump that Trevenell took from being a, a limit use, uh, very pedestrian shooter a year ago to being the best three-point shooter in the West Coast Conference this year percentage-wise. Um, I expect Gideon George to make a similar massive jump and Caleb Lohner to make a similar massive jump and Rich Harwood has still got a ton more ceiling in him and Spencer Johnson to get better. And, you know, I'm telling you, Hunter Erickson is a special player. Um, he's going to make huge tries. And, and we haven't been introduced to T. John yet. Yeah. But this young man, I mean, he averaged six assists a game last year and five rebounds a game playing in the backcourt. He's going to be an incredibly special addition. Uh, And and we've got our first look now the last couple days at at Foose Traore. My goodness, he's got a chance to help us this year. And, you know, there's several other guys coming too. And so we're incredibly excited about what this team could be. It's going to be a little bit of a different feel than last year maybe a little bit more similar to two years ago it is going to be an incredibly fun team to watch uh, i can't wait man and 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 this alex marcello get like i said he's gonna make me sleep a lot better well with t john there do you anticipate him and alex working together very similar to what alex and um brandon avery did last year yeah i think there's some real space for that i really think there's some space for that um uh, you know, it's been hugely important for us. We functioned at our highest level last year on the offensive end when we had two big-time playmakers on the floor. And like I said, T. John is one of, you know, you can count on, on two hands how many six-assist guys there were in the entire country last year. He, it's, it's like his heart and soul. He wants to be a playmaker. And, you know, Alex was a two-plus-to-one assist turnover last year. He's got an unbelievable ability to make plays. When you think about the shooters we have on this team right now, Caleb shooting 56% in the league, uh, uh, um, you know, Alex shooting 
Uh, Trevin shooting 46 percent. You add another playmaker in the mix. It just is. It's really exciting with the space. I believe we'll be able to purchase on the floor next year. It's going to be awesome. Last thing. Are you guys done at this point? Is the roster pretty close to where you want it to be, or are you going to wait to see if other things shake out? I'm really excited about this roster. So excited. But we're always looking to add pieces. <laughs> so we like to hear, Coach, appreciate it. And congratulations on getting a great player back. Let's go. I, I mean, I'm speaking for all Cougar Nation guys. First of all, thank you so much for helping us recruit Alex Barcelo back. And we can't wait to see you guys when we tip off in November. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, brother. Okay. In a packed Marriott Center. And he's up. <laughs> BYU basketball head coach Mark Pope with Jason Shepard. Tijon Lucas was 14th in the country at 5.8 assists a game. Like, we have, we have not said that out loud uh, quite yet. Colby Ross, by the way, second with 7.7. Ball was in his hands a lot. Um, but Is Colby going to be a super senior at Pepperdine? No, he's not back. Oh, he didn't get granted a seven. He said he was done. Oh, wow. He didn't get granted a seven. <laughs> he and uh, Haley, uh, Haley Steed decided they wouldn't come back. Seven years. The general. <laughs> it's like she has a doctorate degree. A lot of people go to school for, uh, you know, 10 years. They're called doctors. Yes. Uh, coming up, a rise and shout to one of our and top five Tuesday dedicated to the best of Alex Barcelo in his first two seasons. Mm. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America Credit Union. Guiding you forward. BYU Sports Nation always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. And you can download the podcast Google or Bing or Ask Jeeves. BYU Sports Nation podcast. Subscribe rate. And what does Jeeves say? What is, ask Jeeves. Jeeves says, if let's you know, you do know. Top like, 5 Tuesday presented like, by Delta Airlines. <laughs> Keep climbing. Like, I don't think, do any, hey, students in the, in the room here, do you know what Ask Jeeves is? <laughs> No, 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 idea. no, no, okay, okay. Alex Barcelo edition, start us off, Jerem. Number five, March 9th, against Gonzaga. Hey, Jalen oh. Suggs and Corey Kispert, get out the way! Best first half ever. Yeah, re- reverse there, two of his 15, BYU lost the game, whatever. This is great. <laughs> Number four, January 30th, late in the game, BYU needing Alex Barcelo to help the Cougars get to overtime Forcing double overtime and an eventual win over Pacific. Mr. Clutch in traffic. The Cougars won by eight that night. Yeah, that was a crazy night, dude. And this is the second play of that. He's got to make two plays. 95-87. Yeah, yeah, that one to send it to double OT. Listen, when you have too many good plays, you just have to go multiple plays. Number three, November 28th against Utah Valley. Ever heard of him? Grabs the rebound. Behind the back, baby. No. Twice. For three at the buzzer. Flash. Yeah. 82-60 win. Three of his 20 points. Yeah, baby. Oh, and the mean mug right after is fantastic. Number two, March 8th. Alex Barcelo, as he has done so often, beats multiple defenders along the baseline. Reverse me. Puts BYU up one with 16 seconds left in the West Coast Conference semifinal. That game against Gonzaga doesn't happen if BYU doesn't get past Pepperdine. How about that? The handoff. Yeah, the, the CIT, CBI champs right there. And Colby Ross. 8277 BYU winner. They brought back COVID with them and messed up the men's volleyball team. But anyway, number one, February 25th, <laughs> San Francisco. Seven for seven. How you like me now? That's a BYU record for Woo! most makes in a row in a game. As Barcelo goes seven for seven against San Francisco. It was a treat indeed. He finished 15th nationally, 48% shooting. Oh, 79-73 win. Our question of the day, how does Alex Barcelo's return change your expectations for Cougar basketball? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at Cougar A70 on Twitter. Getting a larger pair of blue goggles for sure. He will be the catalyst that will maximize the chemistry of the team. Sweet 16 and beyond. Hashtag excited. Wow, these are the sweet 16 ones for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, today's Rise and Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. Dave McCann just wrapped up a great run at KSL, retiring there. A uh, little bit of an increased role here. We're excited about it. And uh, Dave will continue what he's been doing. Yeah, staying with us at BYU TV. Fantastic. Our thanks to today's guests, Alex Barcelo and Mark Pope. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time. Dennis unpulled a plug, apparently, at the top of the show. Had and some S- technical difficulties. Oh, it was his fault? It will be available in its entirety on the BYU TV app. Dennis, we told you, stop messing with things that you don't know. <laughs> For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Steven Rogers. No, not that Steven Rogers. The BYU Steven Rogers. Captain America. Oh. See you tomorrow on BYUSN. Go Cougs.